Hi everybody, it's Eric Murray from thesugarhuddle.com. Well, revenge can be a sweet thing, and certainly the New Orleans Saints know that all too well after getting a little bit of redemption against the Minnesota Vikings in that Minneapolis Miracle rematch last night, Sunday Night Football. And of course, everybody knows what happened back in January at Minnesota when in the divisional playoffs, Minnesota had the unlikely walk-off touchdown on the Stefan Diggs catch and the major Marcus Williams whiff on the tackle. And so for the, the Saints, not only is it a big regular season game, yesterday was, but it was also you know something that they were stewing over in the offseason. Really a great way to redeem themselves and, and get some revenge. And again, even though it's regular season, definitely something that's a real nice, memorable win for the Saints, who now improved to, to 6-1 and one as the Vikings dropped to 4-3-1. and one. And so the Saints obviously right there still with the Rams and the NFC. They're, of course, going to play them next week, and I'll get to that in a little bit. But... Anyways, just wanted to kind of go over what happened last night. The Saints ended up winning 30 to 20 and you know, early on they were trailing 13 to 10. The the Vikings had a nice game plan against them. Drew Brees, he completed I think 10 of 13 passes in the first half. Only had 64 yards. And only had I think 120 or 100 yeah, 120 for the game. So, very, you know, by his standards, really really low production and it wasn't exactly like the run game tore it up that much, but nonetheless, it was a back and forth game. His Saints trailed 13 to 10, and you know Vikings had the ball late in the first half, and you know just like last year, or last Jan, this past January's game where one play completely changed the course of the ball game. In that case, obviously it was a walk off touchdown. In this case, it was a play late in the first half that completely changed the course of this ball game because you had basically what was pretty much a, th- a 14 point turnaround because the Vikings were up 13 10, just over a minute to go in the first half. They were. You know, inside the Saint territory, they were driving and they had a good shot at possibly scoring a touchdown, at the very least kicking a field goal. So they could have been up at least 16-10 at the half, if not 20 to 10, making a two-possession ball game. But then Adam Thielen, who everybody knows is the Vikings, is all pro wide receiver. He, of course, leads the NFL right now in, in receptions and yards. And he actually made a little history in last night's game because he became the first player in NFL history to start the season with eight straight 100 yard receiving games, which kind of expected as far as last night getting to that eighth game just because the Saints secondary after being so special last year has really had down year this year so the Saints defensively are starting to revert back to that 20 that pre-2017 form unfortunately for them which could really uh, be a downfall for them the playoffs we'll see but anyways Thielen had a heck of a game but he made the one play that really turned this whole thing around because instead of carrying a lead in the halftime and, like I said, possibly a double-digit lead. The Saints were able to take the lead late in the first half because what happened was Thielen, again, inside the Saint territory, catches a short pass. Then he lowers his shoulder, puts his head down as two defenders are getting ready to make contact with him a few yards up the field. One of them, Alex Anzalone, is able, the the former Florida uh, linebacker, he's able to pop the ball out. And then Marshawn Lattimore, the all-pro corner, he picks it up and takes it back. I think it was like 54 yards the other way. And then there was an unsportsmanlike on Laquan Treadwell from Minnesota for throwing his helmet to afterwards. And so it ended up being like half the distance of the goal. And shortly after, the Saints score with less than 30 seconds left in the half. And they take a 17-13 lead. And that was big because Saints really made some nice adjustments in the second half. Their offense started to come alive a little bit more, even though the yardage wasn't real big. But they were definitely very efficient. And then their pass rush really stepped up. It was really amazing in the second half. They quickly added a field goal to go up 20-13. to 13. And then, of course, the second game-changing play of the game that was really the dagger. Kirk Cousins, you know, he's getting rushed. He obviously was, I think he's, he got sacked like four times. Yeah, he got sacked four times. Sheldon, Rankin had, Sheldon Rankins had two sacks. And Marcus Davenport, the rookie defense man, who's really coming on, had the other two sacks. But anyways, he was really getting pressured a lot in the second half. And at one point, you know, he steps up in the pocket. He kind of splits the line as he's kind of goes a little bit to his right as he splits inside the line, inside the pocket. And he, he kind of lobs a sidearm throw. And he's expecting the, the receiver, which was a rookie backup running back, to be there. And instead, the, the running back, he was kind of standing in the, the middle of the line of scrimmage. And he wasn't going toward the ball because he didn't realize, you know, where Cousins was going with it. And P.J. Williams, the Saints corner, he kept following Cousins, and Cousins basically threw it right into his hands, you know, just a few yards away. And Williams took it back 45 yards the other way to go up 27-13. That basically 
was all she wrote. Uh, so anyways, you know, Cousins still played a pretty good game. He had, uh, I think, 359 yards, only threw about 10 incompletions. But the second half, like I said, I mean, he was, you could tell he's a little bit flustered. That wasn't a real great throw, and, and obviously he wasn't anticipating to be the corner to be right there. But nonetheless, he was really getting pressured quite a bit. You know, Marcus Davenport, who I just mentioned, he got off to a really slow start as rookie. You remember, you know, the Saints traded up a bunch of spots to draft him, and they took him, I think, 12th or 13th overall and traded way up to get him. And he didn't do anything in preseason, didn't do anything in the first several regular season games. People were worried that, wow, this guy already a bust, even though, again, you know, he's only a rookie. You, you have to be more reasonable than that. But last, you know, few times out, he has really uh, lit it up. You know, remember against the Redskins, Monday Night Football a few weeks back, he had a tremendous game there. And then, you know, had a strip sack in that one. And then this one, he almost had a strip sack against Cousins, but the call on the field was overturned in the second half because Cousins was clearly down. But that was a few plays before the P.J. Williams interception. So that was kind of a bad omen to start that drive for Minnesota. Nonetheless, you know, the Vikings they ran the ball pretty good at the beginning, and then that quickly went away. They only had 85 rushing yards on the night. Diggs and Thielen both had over 100 yards receiving, as you expect. But... You know, Minnesota still has a little issues as far as who that third and that fourth receiver is going to be. Laquan Treadwell still pretty unreliable receiver, as we all know. And then defensively, again, giving up a, a few real big plays. You know, the Saints backup quarterback, Jack of all trades, Taysom Hill. He had a real nice down-the-field throw at one point that gained like 40-some yards. And, you know, Breeze had a big completion to the same receiver, Michael Thomas, of I think it was about 20 or so yards a couple plays before that. So Vikings secondary, they're still struggling, even though they only gave up, you know, a, a pal paltry amount of yardage in this one. They're still giving up some pretty key plays. And then offensively, it, you know, even though they went to the NFC Championship game last year, I still look at it as maybe they're still not ready for the big stage. Again, even though they went to the Conference Championship game last year, it just kind of feels like right now, they're they're not quite where they need to be. You know, the NFC North is so wide open that they have a very good chance of winning it. But as far as getting, you know, as far as when they get to the playoffs, you can just tell that, you know, two teams they've already lost to, the Rams and the Saints, are just superior football teams from them right now. And you just wonder where is Minnesota truly in the NFC pecking order, even if they make the playoffs. And, you know, Kirk Cousins, he struggled in some big games. Overall, played pretty decent in this one, but... Nonetheless, that'll be an interesting storyline. Some people are saying that he was a he's an eighty-four million dollar flop already, but he's you know kept him in a lot of games because really they could be worse than four, three, and one. So I, I think some of that criticism is ridiculous. But nonetheless, he needs to do a little bit more in big games. And obviously in the second half, his Vikings, you know, they were shut out until they scored a late touchdown and they couldn't get the two point conversion to make one possession game, and that officially sunk them. And then on the other side of it, you know, you look at the Saints. Obviously, like I said, pass rush really started to come alive. The secondary starting to play a little bit better because they made the big plays, even though they, they gave up some big plays. They also made some really huge plays. Interception, Marshawn Lattimore, a couple of big plays with the fumble recovery. Also broke up a pass on fourth and one when Minnesota was inside his own territory in the second half. That was a huge, huge play there. I believe that was, yeah, I believe that was the second half. It might have been the first half. But anyway, so they did what they needed to do. The pass rush really starting to come alive. So the defense is starting to come on, you know, especially, and you especially saw that in the second half. And offensively, you know, it kind of proved that, you know, Drew Brees doesn't have to throw 40, 50 plus times for 350 yards every single week. And they can still be effective offensively because, you know, uh, Alvin Kamara, you know, he only had 94 total yards, but he had some really nice plays in this one and was really key in the red zone. So now the Saints, of course, they play the Rams in – you know, they host the Rams in the Superdome and what it will be for now the game of the year until the Rams play the Chiefs. Of course, last year, the Rams won a thriller at home 26-20 in Week 12 against the Saints. So anyways, I concluded my article that I posted on the SugarHuddle.com, the recap of this game, by saying that, you know, the Saints, they had revenge on their mind with the Vikings and with the Rams. This is a team that just clearly doesn't forget. So it'll be very, very interesting to see what the Saints can do in that game. The Rams' defense has also been suspect, so that could be a shootout. You know, we'll see. Obviously, a lot of people thought this was going to be a shootout, and it didn't quite get to that. So, anyways, go to sugarhuddle.com. Check out all my articles. My YouTube videos are also posted on there. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Please like my Facebook page at sugarhuddle.com, and take care. See you soon.